Hi, everyone. Um, we're going to get started with our meeting. So in our last meeting, we talked uh, about using this PLC to make a plan for teaching fractions, which begins in module five. Um, we will be looking at the results of our module five pre-assessments in EQIP, the NF core guides, and the lessons in Eureka, um, the front-loading lessons from EQIP. And we can also use our grade level lessons. So hopefully we can leave today's meeting with some completed learning targets. So based on today's goals, would someone like to suggest a priority norm for the meeting? Um, we have a lot to get done today. So I was thinking assume best of intentions and then keep conversations on topic. I like that. Does everybody agree to keep those two norms as our priority? Yes. yes. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, so great. Um, for our three minute data dash, will everyone just take a look at their class during progress? Uh, let's decide if we feel good about pairing all students to wherever we start with fractions in tier one. And will everyone pull up Zern so we can do a one minute whip around to express any concerns about resetting everyone to the same place? Um, Kara, will you watch the clock and give us a five second warning when our minute is about to end? Sure. Thanks. Okay, so I'm comfortable starting everyone on fractions. I do have three students I'm concerned about. Johnny and Katie have had the same tower alerts in module four. Johnny has an IEP, so he's not in my room during our intervention time. Uh, Kelly, do you think you could look into providing support in those areas during his services instead? And could, would it be possible if Katie could join you since she's getting the same types of tower alerts? Okay. Um, and my other concern is Dylan. He's absent all the time. And when he's here, he just wants to sleep. We'll even try. Um, honestly, I think we could just put them in Kelly's group too because five second warning. All right. Thanks, Charlie. All right. So is everyone ready to look at the pre-assessment? Yeah, before we do that, can I just say that I'm not sure that I have enough time to help with module four math concepts. Um, according to Johnny's IEP, he's supposed to get 30 minutes of reading, and I only have him for 40 each day. Um, and also, I'm not sure about adding Dylan to my caseload without any data on what he really needs. Callie, let's look at the master schedule later today and um, see if there are any adjustments we can make that will give Johnny um, give Johnny time for his reading interventions and also get some help with either with math either from you or one of your paras. Um, Katie can also join in if we can make it work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it looks like we need to figure out what's going on with Dylan, but since we've established that this meeting is going to be about uh, module five, uh, let's go ahead and just add him to the agenda for the behavior support team. Yeah, I agree. I think we need to have our school counselors input on Dylan. All right, so let's move on. Let's look at the pre-assessment for module five and equip. Charlie, can you tell us how did your student, students do? And Carrie, um, will you compile the data from our three classes? Yes, I will. Okay, so I only have results for 15 of my st 17 students. Um, two of them were absent. I'll try to get them to take that test as soon as I'm able to. Um, I have five kids who are in group AI, 10 groups in group A, four kids in group B, five in E, and two in F. Kara, will you go next? Sure. And I'll, I'll, I'll go last. Okay, perfect. Okay, so most of your classes show a need for content A the supporting content A, which is taking them back to second grade standards. There's a few kids in content AI, which is actually for first grade standards. And then there's some smatterings of kids in B, C, D, and E, and F. And those are not, those are just, you know, the um, sixes, sevens, no, actually sixes, eights, nines. It shows you on the checklist. Let me show you where that is. 
If you go to the Equip Module 5 teacher guide, open that up, and then you look at the checklist, it's going to tell you the content. And we know we just started skip counting this year. So I think we should start in topic A, since that's the supporting topic A, since that's where most of the kids are showing a need, which makes sense because they would have done geometry at the very end of the year. And when we um, excused in March, I don't think a lot of kids had that. All right, okay. So I think, um, can we check the core guides too? So, cause I'm pretty sure this year was their first year working with fractions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so I got the core guides pulled up for NF1. Um, the critical prerequisite skill, if you look right here, it, it shows you the standards for second grade and first grade. They're both geometry standards and they're about partitioning. So um, in first and in second, kids learn how to partition. And in second grade, they do halves, thirds and fourths. In first grade, it's just halves and fourths. All right, so the only difference between first grade and second grade standards is the number of fractional parts they partition with. That's correct. correct. Yeah. Okay. Did anyone else notice that topic A in module five is a geometry standard? Um, it says partition shapes into parts with equal areas, express the area of each part as a unit fraction of the whole standard uh, three G3. And then in topic B, we start teaching three NF1. Yeah, that's actually really good because it's gonna give everyone some practice with partitioning beyond the halves and the thirds and the fourths before we actually start working with the fractional concepts that we're supposed to teach in third grade. Okay. Okay, so since the data indicates a need for supporting lesson A, let's front load with that lesson, then start module five, lesson one. Um, so we can start writing a learning target for the front load lesson. Okay, so I'm looking at the exit ticket for that lesson. Our kids will need to be able to partition shapes into halves, thirds, and fourths. They also need to be able to shape one or more parts. Okay, and then just remember it's really important for them to understand that those parts need to be equal in size. That's one of the misconceptions kids often have. So mm -hmm. as you're watching them partition, make sure they're making equal size parts are close to equal. Mm -hmm. Do the kids actually have to use the word partition? They do actually, they have to know that language. So that's a good point. Could I get a list of the math words and how you're explaining it so that I can support the kids with understanding? Yeah, of course. Um, I can get a list of those math words to you, uh, well, the language, and then we'll really need to emphasize the math words when we're unpacking the learning target as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, so um, how about we use the what part of our target and we can say today we will learn how to partition and then we can also use that word divide so they can know that that's kind of what that means. Um, shapes into equal size parts. Okay, and so, then the next part would be so that we can uh, identify fractional parts in a whole. And then that success criteria, um, you'll know you've got it when you can divide shapes equally and shape those parts correctly. So remember that the last part needs to be something kids can do on their own. So how will you know that they can, they've done it correctly? Okay, so how about if the, we put it as um, first they partition divide shapes into halves, thirds, and fourths. Then they can show us that the parts in each shape are equal size, and um, then they will shape the number of parts in indicated. And beyond that, they should probably get feedback from the teacher when they finish and complete that. Okay. Is it helpful if you put it up on the on the learning target on the board with a picture, and then as you're talking through it on the learning target? Yes, the learning target should be on the board where everything is visual to the students. Also. I really like that. Um, I don't really want us to use the word divide. Um, we just finished working on division and it might confuse them. Could we um, like have a sample visual? Okay. Yeah, I agree with you, Charlie. I think using divide is a little bit confusing. So what if instead we said, today we will learn how to partition shapes into equal size parts? 
so we can identify the fractional parts in a whole. And then you know we've got it when you can partition or decompose shapes into halves, thirds, or fourths. The parts in each shape are equal in size, hitting that part you talked about, Carrie. And then you've shaded the number of parts indicated. Yeah, I, I like that. I like the word de decompose because they know that word means to break apart. And so they'll be familiar with it or hopefully will be. And then on the example, I was noticing on the exit ticket, the way that it, it has like a numeral and then just the word like halves, thirds, fourths. So I think if we are gonna add a visual, let's have it look the same. So like maybe one fourth and then um, like a rectangle that's partitioned into four equal parts with one part shaded. But I'm thinking maybe, you know, we want to point out that it doesn't have to be the first part. Sometimes kids always think that the parts shaded have to be start on the left and move right. Yeah, and they can, can really any part. Yeah, it can be any part because we want to really emphasize that, you know, the one fourth, if we pick the second one fourth or the third one fourth, it's still going to be the same size because they're equal size parts. Okay, so you're suggesting then to draw a visual example to go along with the learning target so they can also see it. Right. Not just the words, but then like an actual example. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then I also noticed that the fluency activities in this module have a lot of skip counting. Um, I think that makes sense because we'll have to work in, with those factors and finding common denominators later on in the module. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the core guides real quick, too. Um, okay, great. And I don't know if you guys also noticed, but in the core guides, it says we only work with denominators of two, three, four, six, and eight. So um, I don't know how I've never noticed that, but that's going to be so important to keep in mind when um, we're teaching, especially for those kids who are struggling with their multiplication facts. Yeah. And yeah, that's awesome. So Carrie, basically, I mean, you're telling me that I don't have to feel like a failure because my kids can do their uh, sevens facts and they don't have those down. No, you should never feel like a failure anyway. But sevens are really hard. So they actually do work on sevens the next year in fractions. They're not going to work on them in third. I mean, still practice them because we want them to have that automaticity. Right. But you don't need to worry about it in terms of denominators. Oh, okay, I'm so happy. That's a relief. Yay. I love it when you're happy. <laughs> but we are. We're running out of time, you guys. So can we get a few more learning targets done before we go? Okay. Uh, can I start? Yeah. Um, so um, I looked at the first few lessons yesterday. So the first lesson is about thinking of the fractional parts of the unit. So we've been talking about ones, tens, hundreds, and now we'll be talking halves, thirds, and fourths, and so on. Uh, kids won't do the fraction notation with the numerator and denominator, denominator until topic B. So in the first lesson, Eureka has us folding strips of paper into halves and then fourths, another strip of paper into thirds and sixths. And then we have to show other ways to think of fractional parts using the volume of water as well. Um, we could really do this with anything that we have, candy, um, other objects. Yes, go ahead. There is a really great video that this guy goes through um, in the in the digital suite that you can watch for lesson one that kind of shows you. I was a little confused about what he was, you know, they were asking you to do when you're reading through the lesson, but that video is really helpful. Oh, nice. Oh, thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, so we need to pay attention to the materials we're going to need to prepare. Mm -hmm. And then um, let's see what kids need to do on the exit ticket so we can create the learning target. And um, with the exit ticket, it asks students to name one fourth, partition in thirds, and then create their own fraction model partitioned into thirds that represents a word problem. Yeah, this that's is a, a lot, you guys. Yeah, that's, that's the lot. exit ticket up there. That's a big dump from the supporting lesson. But some of the things are the same as the day before, though. Mm -hmm. That's true. So how about we just focus on um, the new learning? So today we will learn how to draw a fraction model that represents a word problem. And then we could say, so we can solve word problems involving parts of a whole, and how will kids know they are successful? Um, well, what if they can compare with each other? 
Okay, so then the success criteria would be draw a model that represents the whole in the problem. So like if you look at number three, that's the problem they have to do on their exit ticket. So they'd have to draw the model to represent the 12 feet, then they'd have to partition it correctly into three different parts and then use fractional language to indicate the number of parts in the problem and then compare a model to make sure it looks the same as a friend or partner. So that's four things. Um, yeah, I really do like Kara's idea of having to explain it, but I don't know if we can count on them all having the same model um, since this is still pretty new. Maybe sure. we could examine student work separately though and not have that be a part of the success criteria. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And actually showing their, their models is such a good practice because then they can see how other kids are interpreting it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love that idea. Okay, so lesson two really focuses on the equal parts idea and it goes into eight. Uh, it also requires kids to create a fraction model, uh, but it's a little tricky because the word problem says someone and their three friends, and I'm guessing they're going to um, put this into thirds yeah. instead of fourths. Yeah, so. And I love that you guys are thinking of what their misconceptions are going to be ahead of time because that way you're not blindsided when you get into teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also do all the math problems first. So we know what kind of questions the kids are going to have and going to be seeing. Oh, good job. I don't always have time for that since I have a lot of kids at all different grade levels, um, but it's really nice when you guys let me know what, that you're, what you're seeing in class. Okay, um, we only have a few more minutes to, start to decide on next week's agenda. Um, it will be an ELA planning PLT and Charlie will be the facilitator. Okay, yeah. Um, so I was thinking for Dita Dash uh, next week, we could look at Lexia, um, but it's been a while since we've also looked at progress monitoring. Um, so if you guys um, don't have any problem with it, could you bring um, progress monitoring data next week? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. And then for our tier one planning, we'll be looking at opinion writing. Um, so I'll be sending you a writing prompt and a rubric, and then I will go ahead and um, send you a reminder about two days before, and you can review it. Sounds good. Okay. Right. And then, hey, just on the um, third grade ELA resources, just remember that um, that's where you're going to find the writing rubric. Rubrics yeah, the are rubrics there. are there, and then also the um, sorry, the MPAC standards, so that you know that'll help you with your analysis of the writing. Yeah, that's our story. Yeah, great. Thanks. Okay. So um, can we do a quick fist to five on how well we adhere to our norms? Ready, go. <laughs> All right. I wish we had more time for reflection, but we're out of time. <laughs> so I'll record that number on this agenda and ask that we all just self-reflect. Sounds good. Perfect. All right. Nice work, team. Thanks. Thanks.